And you've probably heard the expression, you should never judge a book, or in this case, a monster, by its cover. And for today's creature, that expression holds true in more ways than one. Welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are going to be talking about a creature way back from the days of advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I was reading through the Fiend Folio the other day, and I found this image of a creature that kind of jumped out at me, and I was like, oh, that looks interesting. What is that? And then I saw what it was named, and I laughed, because it's hilarious. The tween as it's called, is actually a pretty cool monster despite having what is one of the most unfortunate names I think I've ever seen from one of the older books. And despite being named after a slang term for a child between the ages of 10 and 12, it's pretty cool. Essentially what this creature is, is some sort of extra planar entity that has made a bond with a mortal creature living on the material plane. And what you get here is basically the main character from the Shadow of Mordor games. A powerful creature who combines the unearthly aspect of a wraith with the powerful skills and nature of a talented warrior. The mortal in this situation is acting as a host to this ghostly creature. It doesn't lose its autonomy or ability to think for itself. In fact, the two creatures communicate with each other telepathically, speaking as if they were a team working together using one body. I thought this sounded really cool, and the book presented some very interesting ideas on how to utilize this bonded creature in some interesting ways. So today I'm going to talk about what this creature can do in battle, and of course how you can use it in your 5th edition game. Normally I would also have a section where I talk about modifications I've made to the creature that deviate from what's in the book, but because this is AD&D material from the Fiend Folio, 99% of this monster is just stuff that I've kind of come up with based on the ideas that are presented there. So having a modification section would be kind of redundant because most of this is just me interpreting this creature for a newer version of the game. However, to get this out of the way immediately, the one major change I did make to this creature from the book was changing the name. Because at the end of the day, it's unavoidable no matter how badass of a character this is in your world, when the players find out that it's called a tween, they will laugh at him and they will think it's stupid. And understandably so. So believe it or not, I got rid of that iconic tween moniker and replaced it with the name that I came up with myself. I decided to brand this creature the Gravewalker because it's essentially a mortal being that has made some kind of alliance with a ghostly entity that walks that very line between life and death every Every day. So, with all that established, let's see what the Gravewalker can do in... So as I said, this creature is a ghostly warrior and a mortal sharing a body. As you'd expect, that grants some extraordinary abilities. And technically, the humanoid mortal in this partnership could be any creature, really. But for the base creature that I've made the stat block for, we're going to assume it's a human warrior roughly on par with the skill level of the veteran that we find in the monster manual. So of course, it retains its longsword and longbow attacks, which are just martial attacks it could make as any normal person could. However, because of its ghostly aspect, it also adds an extra 2d6 cold damage onto those hits. I kind of imagine the spectral form of the Ghost Walker mimicking the mortal's movements in every way, so when it hits with its sword, it's not just the physical sword slashing you, but this like ethereal blade that deals cold damage. Same thing goes for the arrows that penetrate its targets. So not only does it make those attacks more viable in the CR range that I've placed it in, which would be CR5, but it adds a nice little bit of flavor to this creature as well. The Grave Walker also gets ethereal sight out to 120 feet, which is extremely situational, but in those situations can be very, very useful. If you're not familiar with what ethereal sight is, it basically means while you're on the material plane, you can see 120 feet into the ethereal plane, and if you were on the ethereal plane, you'd be able to see 120 feet into the material plane if you so chose. I kind of imagine this looking something like what Frodo experiences when he puts on the ring in Lord of the Rings. So aside from being able to see undead and other ethereal creatures, this has the added benefit of making it almost impossible for your enemies to hide from you. Because if someone is trying to hide from you and say they're in some nearby bushes, as a person, it'd be possible to fail your perception check and not be able to see that guy lurking there, right? But if you have ethereal sight, those bushes are inconsequential. You can see that person's soul. So yes, they're hidden, but it's kind of like having x-ray vision for living creatures to an extent. It also means that this creature isn't going to be affected negatively by spells like darkness and fog, anything that obscures its vision without obscuring its ethereal vision, because it can just see through it. 
pretty neat ability. I also wanted to give this creature another melee attack that has some kind of ghostly aspect to it. My first thought, and what I ended up doing, was giving it the same ability that the Spectre has, which is Life Drain. It works exactly the same way it does for the Spectre. It's a melee spell attack, which when it hits, it does 46 necrotic damage, which is one extra dice over the Spectre, because this is a higher level creature. Not only does this attack do a fair bit of damage though, it forces the target to make a constitution save of 11, and if they fail it, that damage they take also reduces their maximum hit point pool by that number. The reduced hit point maximum is restored, of course, when that creature takes a long rest, but in the middle of battle, that's not going to help you restore hit points, which is kind of what this ability is meant to do. Of course, if this ability drops someone to zero or less, they just die. Because of the CR range which this creature is in, it gets multi-attack, so it can do one hit with its long sword, which does a decent amount of damage, and then it can also use its drain life ability to stab and essentially steal the life force away from its opponent, which is pretty cool, and also does a punishing amount of damage. Playing to that ghostly magic theme, I gave this creature another ability called Blink. Essentially, this lets the Gravewalker teleport up to 40 feet away as a bonus action, which is useful in an insane amount of scenarios. It's good for darting between targets between attacks, it's good for closing the gap if there's someone using ranged magic or just ranged attacks against you. It's also good for retreating because you can attack, teleport away, and then move rather than having to double your movement and not be able to attack them. This ability is on a recharge of 5 to 6, so it can't be just abused indefinitely, but it will definitely make the Gravewalker a lot harder to pin down in combat. And of course, being part ghost, it does get some resistances. Basically, any type of damage that a regular ghost would be immune to, such as necrotic, cold, poison, or psychic, this creature is not immune to, but is resistant to. And on top of that, they also get dark vision, which isn't a huge thing a lot of the time, especially since they have that ethereal sight, but it might come in handy once in a while. The only situation I can really think of offhand is if they're fighting something that's undead so it doesn't have a life force like a zombie, not a ghost, but specifically a zombie and they're in a dark place, then the dark vision will come in handy. Having dark vision in ethereal sight is kind of like having true sight without the magical aspect of it, so it's kind of like a dumbed down version of true sight essentially. The last ability that I gave to this creature, which is something that I kind of view as its signature ability and what I feel will make it very memorable, is a trait called the uh, Dual Aspects. This is the one thing that truly separates this creature from other undead and most other creatures in general. As a body essentially housing two minds, this creature has advantage on any mental skill checks, so intelligence, wisdom, or charisma checks. You see a similar trait with the Etten, which is another creature that has two minds. The other part of this though, is it makes all attack rolls with advantage, and all attacks against it have disadvantage. This is essentially the culmination of these two beings working in perfect harmony as one, kind of playing to each other's strengths. And this trait I can't even take full credit for because believe it or not, in the 1981 published Fiend Folio, there's literally a line of text that reads, The creature makes two die rolls on any attack and uses the most advantageous. I actually laughed a little bit when I saw that, partially just because it makes it so easy to convert to 5th edition, but they were essentially using advantage as a mechanic for this creature like 30 years ago. <laughs> so who knew? AD&D was doing advantage before it was cool, I guess. Anyways, this last ability is not only very powerful, but also I think thematically really hits home with what I was trying to do with this creature, which is always a good feeling. Now normally this is where we would talk about modifications we've made, but as I explained before, I did this guy mostly from scratch, so instead we're just going to move right along to some... So this creature makes an amazing NPC. Any character that your players interact with could just be a Gravewalker. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a bad character, although it kind of lends to that sinister nature. Because in some cases, as the lore from the book describes it, the Gravewalker can be made by a ritual where people are basically trying to summon forth the spirit of a powerful warrior to bond with. So I could see maybe the leader of a thieves guild or some kind of warlock circle trying to bond with this powerful warrior to enhance their power above all of their peers, thus becoming the leader. But it also states it's very possible for the ghostly part of the Gravewalker, so I guess the true Gravewalker itself, to align itself with the creature that it has deemed worthy. So it's possible for a creature who wasn't even trying to become a Gravewalker to be approached and bonded by this otherworldly spirit. So in a situation like that where you want it to be a good NPC, perhaps it's a paladin who's hosting the spirit of an ancient member of their holy order. 
maybe this ancestral spirit kind of came back to him and bonded with him because there was some great evil that needed to be subverted. Or perhaps there's a paladin order in your world that is entirely made up of grave walkers. Maybe when a mentor dies, his spirit passes on to be with his student. So that student then becomes the new mentor and also is a grave walker with their old mentor kind of always with them, allowing them to do extraordinary things. And then when that creature dies, their spirit goes to pass on to their student and so on and so forth. But I mean, if you don't want to do anything that's going to take a lot of effort to integrate into your world, this is also just a good way to enhance a random encounter. Perhaps the random group of bandits on the side of the road is led by a powerful bandit captain who also happens to be a gravewalker. Maybe that bandit captain got where she is by using her exceptional powers to destroy her enemies. That could also make for a good hook too, where maybe people who have escaped from slavers or something and have been telling tales about how the leader of this cruel group of slavers was able to literally suck the life out of her enemies. And I mean, the base creature I've got here is CR5, which I feel is pretty good. But if that's too low for your game, but you like the idea of this creature, there's no reason that you couldn't make a much higher level creature a Gravewalker. Because as I said, the base creature assumes a competent warrior, but nothing more. You could easily take, say, maybe a 14th level fighter that you've kind of crafted as a big villain for that arc of the campaign and make them a ghost walker. Just give them an increase in speed of 10 feet, bump up their stats a little bit, and then give them all the traits of the base creature here and that lifesteal attack. That's essentially all you need to do. Honestly, that sounds like a pretty great villain for a campaign arc to me. Or maybe the true villain of your campaign is actually the entity itself that is bonding with the mortal. Perhaps when the PCs subvert and destroy the original villain of the first arc of the campaign, months or years later they find out someone else has been continuing that villain's work. Of course only to find out in the end that it is in fact a Gravewalker who has been cycling through different mortals, basically promising them power if they help further its schemes. And then to truly defeat their nemesis, they either have to travel to the ethereal plane where they can truly kill the ghostly aspect of this creature, or find a way to summon it to the material plane and kill it that way. I'm really happy with how this creature turned out. I think it's a super neat concept and I'm excited to try to use it in some of my games. And whether you're using it as a powerful main character or villain, or perhaps just as a supplement to a random bandit encounter, I think it has potential to add a lot of flavor to any game, really. So hopefully you enjoyed listening to me talk about this creature today. As always, you can find the stat block for this guy in the description below. If you are one of my lovely patrons, you can find the Monster Manual style stat block on the Patreon page. It should be posted there by now. And if you do like what I do here, you want to support the channel, best way to do that is to simply subscribe. I've got at least one or two new videos every week. And other than that, um, for you guys out there who are already subscribed, one of the things people often ask me a lot is what can I do to support the channel? Um, honestly, just tell your friends. Tell your friends who play D&D. Tell them to come check out Dungeon Dad's awesome monsters that they can use to kill their friends. And if they're not terrible DM monsters yet, we do have player tips as well so they can check out those videos instead. Anyways, that is all I've got for you guys today, so thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Till then.